All right, guys. Hopefully everybody is starting to see the live and starting to join. Um, this is my first time, so bear with me. Okay, so I chose a 12 by 16 canvas. I have both pictures back here that we're going to um, draw or paint. I'm going to choose the top one that um, the red, orange, yellow, white, black. I think that is it. Here are the colors that we'll need for uh, the top painting. So the top painting, I'm going to need yellow and orange. And red, and that is the background. And then the foreground is black with white. So white, we'll start with our center. So this is what I did with my paints. Um, you can use a plate, you can use whatever you'd like. Um, so I just kind of overfilled my background colors. And then my foreground colors, I don't have as much. So we usually use three brushes. We have the big, the medium, and the small. So for these three brushes are pretty much all that you're going to need for um, painting this scene. You're going to take your big brush and then put it in the paint. Just I like to just get it on there. So take that big brush and then you can kind of just do that uh, a U-shaped sweeping motion for that color in the back. I'm leaving the center, the lighter color. We can always go back with a little bit of white to go in and make that sun a little bit brighter later on. So I'm just going in with that red and giving that a good U shape. So you want to kind of like act like it's going to keep continuing around. And even if it helps, to take yourself around. Just pretend that that canvas goes all the way. I'm gonna go ahead and coat all the way down, continuing in that U shape. So we see all of these little brush strokes happening in that same flow. Now, one thing I'd like to say is please remember whatever you're doing to the front, you do to the sides. So when you're coming up on your painting from the side, you're not going to see this white. You're gonna actually go ahead and paint the sides. So when you have the picture on the wall, you'll see it painted. So whatever you're doing to the front, please go ahead and just paint that color to the sides. We chose this one because it can be done with any color that you want. So it's very, very free to kind of choose whatever background. If you want more red, if you want more yellow, if you want more of a daytime color or like the bottom right here, you can even add some stars and make that more of a nighttime scene. Um, but the daytime blues are so pretty. So if anybody has questions, please go ahead and tap it. I keep watching just to make sure I am answering everybody's questions. So go ahead, type away and I will answer as quick as possible because I know that we're all like trying to work together.
There we go. Alrighty, I see lots and lots of people that I know and a couple that I don't. So that, is that Canada? That's awesome. And then Tacoma. Oh, hey. And Marita. All right, I didn't give myself enough red, so I'm giving myself a little more red. So how is everybody surviving the social distancing? It is the hardest thing for especially kids, but I know that adults are having huge, huge issues. We're not used to it. We're not used to being so far away from each other. I still go to work in a hospital, so we practice as much as possible, social distancing. So don't come in and see me, thanks. Are you guys hard at work painting? Because I don't have any comments yet. I know this is the easy part. So I left a huge amount of this, a bright color up here, or the white. So I know that we are gonna have to kind of um, work in our other colors. If you didn't, and I'm not gonna do it here, but if you didn't, always take that hair dryer. Take that hair dryer, dry your canvas, that way those lighter colors can sit on top of those darker colors. So if you didn't save a part of your canvas or your kid didn't save part of your canvas, just dry it really fast and then come back in with your lighter colors to sit right on top. So I am going to dip into the yellow, cause why not? And do you see that red and that yellow made a really, really nice orange without me having to even use the orange. The studio is not used to being quiet, so it's really, really strange not having anybody talking. <laughs> um, with the big brush, the fun thing about the big brush is one, it covers super fast, and two, you have several different sizes. You have the wide, you have narrow, and then any kind of decision that you want to go back and forth, you have any of that size. So especially when you're doing that second color, I can kind of turn my brush for thin and then just keep, I'm switching it. So I'm just kind of doing this in my hand and just kind of playing with that brush. And that's going to give you all of these neat little um, streaks and all the different sizes. So it looks like it's a little more natural, a little more flowy. So I added a little bit of that orange, actually a lot of it. Um, and I'm just going to keep working that in and I love streaks the more you brush the more it'll blend the less you brush the less it'll blend so if you are working on it and you go and put a good amount on your brush and you just kind of leave that streaky you can just kind of play with it just a little bit and then I love seeing those streaks later on so if you want it to blend, you keep going back and forth with that brush. And then the more you see, the more you go back and forth, I'm gonna take a little bit of orange, the more you go back and forth, see that? It pretty much just all the way went away. But if you take a good amount and then you go with that brush, there's that color. There's that those pretty strokes and that color. Let's see. Okay, so I just wanna do a recap. 
All right, sorry. I see lots of people have just joined, so I will do a little bit of a recap. When I'm starting it out, I took my red and my big brush and I just covered all of this in like a U shape. So I left this white. And then whenever you're painting, I always like whatever I'm doing on my painting to continue itself on all of the sides. So whenever you look at it, um, I know that I don't frame my artwork. So whenever I see it on the wall, I want to be able to see whatever I did. I, if I do trees, I continue the trees over to the side. If I did something up here on the top, and then I'm gonna continue it over to the side. Um, so, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry it took a while to find, I'm sorry. Let's see. So, was ready but couldn't find the, oh, I'm so sorry. I don't, I put it right to my, posted it straight to my page, I thought. I told you, this is my first time and I am so, so sorry. I will turn it into a video afterwards and I will start, I'll slow down just a little bit and I really apologize. Um, so first thing we did, I have all of my colors in my palette. If you have a plate, if you have a bowl, however you're going to want to do it, that's just fine. It's, there's no rules. Um, so I chose the red background. So the top picture over here. And then I chose that red and that big brush and I just covered the whole canvas, leaving this part of the canvas, that natural white. If you cover that, this part of the canvas, don't worry, just take a hair dryer and dry this part right here. That way you can layer your colors on top of it. So if you didn't leave this part with the white background, don't worry, just um, blow dry it for a little bit. Um, try not to put your blow dryer too close. I know lots of the blow dryers are really hot. Um, so keep your blow dryer for about six inches away from your canvas. If you have a lot of paint on your canvas, you can blow dry from the front and then switch to the back. That way you're, you're drying your canvas and your paint, not just the top part, but you're drying all that underneath part too. Let's see. I'm so sorry. Yes, I will slow, slow down. I'm a little nervous. I apologize, but I, and yes, absolutely. And so with the, the bottom one, I will say the bottom one, you're, you're doing the same, um, kind of the same process. I, this one's just dropped down a little more. So it's not as, as tall up in the front. So it looks more like you're kind of like looking up during the day. It's really, really pretty. Um, so this one was just a bright blue and then the, to get the darker edges was a darker, I think it's purple iris for this color around the edges. So it's the same exact way, except for I th this one is you paint the whole thing and you dry it and then you kind of layer that white on top of the blue color, the same way you do it up here, but just a little more like we wanted you to see more uh, of the sun we wanted to see or moon depending on how you wanted to do it i really think that this would look really cool having that splatter um uh stars i think that it would mean a whole different thing because it's not during the daytime it would be nighttime but i think it'd be really really neat just to have a couple of stars in the background of this one that's so you have daytime nighttime but this is still awesome all by itself um okay so I am really, really trying to make sure that I'm answering any of the questions. And I think, or is everybody starting to get a little caught up? Um, I am just playing with the yellow and the orange. I have to say, if you had any of my classes, you know, I hate washing my brush. I, the introduction of water is, um, leaves so much to mess up on. So if we don't get all the water out of our brush and then we just go back in the paint and then we have drips. So I hate it. I have three colors in this brush right now. I have red, orange, and yellow, and I just keep dipping them in and just 
keep adding to the canvas. So you can see this red down here is a little dry. So it, that orange is sitting right on top of it. And over here, it's a little thicker, so it's a little wet. If you see streaks that you don't like, so if there's any kind of like, oh, I can still see my canvas and I don't like that. So take your red and then kind of just go over those areas that you're seeing that you want to stay red and just kind of go over them a little bit. Again, if you're home, use your hair dryer. Hair dryer is your best friend ever. If you mess up and you want to do something different, blow dry it really fast and then you can go right over the top of it and do whatever you need to do to fix whatever it needs to be fixing because it just it's hard to go over wetness and and redo it but if you dry it it's like taking an eraser and just going right back on top it never happens this one is such a free painting though that if you didn't tell anybody they would hardly even know that you made a mistake if you ever if you did this is just such a free um uh, uh, a free painting that it allows you just to be creative and it's i like it when you guys do your own thing i heard that one wants to do um rainbow colors and so it'll look very very different from mine but it's the same idea light to dark rainbow colors um however you're wanting to do it you just as long as you're following the light to dark you can be as free and as different as you want to make that yours so if you're doing the blue what other color should you add all right so when you're doing the blue your other colors you're going to have a purple to help deepen it and then you're going to have the white to help bring that out so in this painting you see very bright whites and then you see blues mixed in with that so the those blues are mixed in with the white but there's no purple mixed in with the white because you want that purple to be your dark your 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 you want your focal point to kind of come in so that purple has no white mixed into it but those blues do have white mixed into it and then on top of it is your moon slash sun slash whatever you want to call it um, there so this one is a little different than this one but it's the same kind of idea since it's only two colors you're using that white with that blue to give yourself the light to dark where i have the choice of the the other colors but if you have say the light blue a dark blue a navy you can completely do the same thing as i'm doing here with all those different shades I really, 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 once I make this into a video, if you guys could post your pictures on the video, that is one of the most exciting things for me is to be able to see how creative you got, how different yours is. I want to see everybody's paintings if possible. If you would like to just go ahead and once I get this turned into a video, just go ahead and leave a comment and show me how you did it. And then everybody else can see the how you did yours. Let's see. All right, so I'll recap. So if you just got here, we started with a plain white canvas. Here, I put my colors in my palette, and then that red, I took that red, and I just completely made this U shape. I left this part open and white, and just completely made the U shape. And whatever I did to the front, I carried over to the sides. So I want to see whatever it is I'm doing when it's hung up, I want to see those sides um, matching. So, and you'll notice it later. So you go to hang it up and you come up to your painting and you're like, oh, that's white. You can always play with it later. But if you can, please just remember, whatever you do to the front, you do to the sides. See, um, so like I, 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 if you missed it before, 
if you went ahead and painted this whole canvas, whatever your color, if you're doing the blue, if you're doing these colors or whatever colors you're doing, if you went ahead and painted your whole canvas with that dark color, don't worry. Take your friendly blow dryer and blow dry about six inches from your canvas um, and just kind of blow dry that. And then you can go to the back of the canvas and blow dry it again. So you're gonna get that nice um, dry all the way through. And then you can take your yellows and your orange and your white and kind of put it on top of that other color. You'll see it sits right on top, just fine. So if you miss that step and you're you're painting away trying to get all that done and this whole thing is now red or whatever, if even if it's blue. So with over here, this one is blue. So you can dry it, put the whites on top, and then blend it in like that. Alrighty. Let's see. All right. So I'm gonna I'm playing with my brush. I don't use a lot of water, if any. The only time I really use water is if I'm doing a complete change of color. So if I say if I'm playing with red or purple and then I want to switch to green, you definitely want to dry your brush or just pick up a new brush to take care of that. And you guys try to remember, put your brush in your water when you're not using it. So you don't want your brush to get ruined by leaving it sitting out. If you leave it sit out, it's really hard to clean later and you just have to replace it. You can make even the cheaper brushes that you get from Walmart, Michaels, order online, Amazon. You can make those things last so much longer as long as you put them in the water while you're not using them. I like to use rags, so old towels, um, I will take and just divide up in these little bitty rags and those are my favorite to just get all of the paint and water out of my brush. And then when they're ruined, they're ruined. If it's not so bad, you can wash them and use them again. So that way you're not going through tons of paper towels. So if anybody, you have a, an old towel around that you just don't care about anymore, that is your new best friend when you're working with paints and water and whatnot to try to get all of that out. Let's see. So if you're doing the blue, you're still in that circular motion. You're still going around in that circular motion. You can fill in a little more if you're wanting. If you're doing that blue, you'll just dry and go right on top of that, adding that pretty white moon sun, however that is, um, on top. And then you can use your brush to add in those p white pieces. So you're, you're gonna, we're gonna do the same thing up here. So here's the white and the yellow. We're gonna do the same thing. You do the same thing here with the white and the blue, adding in those different colors. So I don't know if anybody's missed this part, but if you have a good amount of paint on your brush, and you just take it and swipe it in, that's gonna give you those good rings, those, those lots and lots of brush movement. With this big brush, you have three sizes. You have the wide, you turn it, you have a small, and then you can use any form of that diagonal. And when I'm doing it in my hand, I'm taking that brush and kind of twisting it so I can take it and do a wide to a small to a big. I, so even in like one bro stroke, you can do all sorts of, of little mini actions, making all of those different sizes because in nature, you're not gonna see every little line being that same size. You want that free movement. So. Alrighty, I am going to play a little bit more with this yellow inside. So if you're doing blue, you'll play a little bit more with that white. So I am going to wash my brush now. I want that red out of there because I will never get a yellow out of that brush with all of that red in there. And believe you me, it is so in your brush and every little part of it all the way to the base that you think you have it clean and then you go to do it with your lighter color and bam, you have orange um, or black, whatever you're doing. So like if you paint your canvas black 
and then you think you've washed it out good enough next thing you know you're like seeing all these little black streaks because your blush brush all the way down here has that paint so you're as good as you can dry out that brush after you've played with it in the water every once in a while you can take um, regular dish soap hand soap and it helps really really clean those brushes really because they get really dirty really loaded up with a bunch of color let's see so yes for that one right here this one the the white is more centered and then so you'll see more of a circular pattern with this white one where you're seeing more of a u pattern with this one up here you're going to see more of a circular pattern with this what i do find when you're sitting down your you have an arc to your elbow so when you're moving even doing this you have an arc to your elbow so if you can stand up you can move around or just keep in mind that i need to make sure to take away that arc i need to work or my whole shoulder not just my elbow or and then remember your wrist your wrist for those really small areas so if i'm working on the, that blue one right there i can start here and then i work myself and i'm really not using a lot of my elbow i'm using my shoulder to bring in that huge circular moment and you just keep that circular movement going all the way around if you stopped here you might lose that circular movement so if you did this and then you start doing this you'll start losing that circular moment and giving more of that u shape that's up top so you keep going even though you're not hitting the canvas at that point but you are keeping that movement that um, circular motion happening all right i'm going to dunk it in the yellow and then i'm going to give myself a good amount of yellow Again, remember, whatever you do to the top or the front, you do to the sides. So I know that I say it. And in class, I say it over and over and over again. And sometimes I get caught and I forget. So we say it over and over again because it's a hard thing to remember. You're concentrating so much on that front that you forget those sides are there. All right. And then I don't know if somebody, uh, it's a good reminder, the more you go over and over and over it, the more you blend. If you don't want it to blend, you want those pretty streakies, you take it and just do a couple of strokes and then you're going to get those streaks. In this kind of a painting, I love the streaks because it creates movement that all of these streaks are creating your eye to kind of keep going. If your um, sun is more in the center, you'll want those streakies to kind of keep going around the sun. So the more you brush, the more it blends. The less you brush, the less it blends and the more streaks you have. All right. So you, for the white, Tina, you are going to use white. So that white will blend in with those blues creating, because this is only one color blue. And when you did it, it was all the whites inside of it, giving you all those other colors. So yes, you're going, so I'm using yellow, I'm using orange, but with that blue, you are going to, white's going to be your best friend white is so the same thing i'm doing here you would be doing mixing in that white so that white is going to give you all of this little streakies you'll have so you'll have blue in your brush still so you're going to see all here all sorts of different colors of blue because there's still blue in that brush so there's not an actual clear white in that blue one and then we will add white to this one too we'll add white when we're doing our um, the center sun movement and then don't forget your top because 
as I was going to, all the top of this area, the sun area right there. See, I told you, even I have to remind myself, and especially if you're sitting down and you can't see the top, it doesn't exist, right? So kind of keep reminding yourself that top exists. You want that top to be painted as well. So I am going to create that circular movement that we were talking about. And I am using, using my whole shoulder. I'm not using my, my elbow, whole shoulder to get that movement, to get that, that nice round feeling for the sun, that center part. I've left as much as I can white. If you didn't, please know that you can go back in use your friendly um, hair dryer and give yourself a good blow dry and then it sits right on top just like if it was dry so i came in i had my white on my brush touched the center of the canvas where i wanted my son to go and then started going around and around with that white so that's going to start brightening up that center and with that white on your brush, you can kind of do the same thing. Give yourself some streaks. So the more white you have on the brush, the more white you're going to see in your canvas. So I just tip, just hit the tip of the brush with that white. And then do the same thing. Just kind of continue that shape. If you're doing a complete circle in the middle, you'll complete the circle with your white and your um, your streaks if at this point you don't like using this big brush you're just kind of covering it too fast you can always go down to your medium brush to help you get some of the finer movements um, but remember if you're turning your brush you have that really small so this area right here so that gives you those little streakies and then you have your big and anywhere in between so you can always keep moving this brush in your fingers, giving yourself that all that different movement. That's, I'm gonna just kind of hit the top just a little bit. Now, if you've lightened this to a point that you're like, oh, that's too much orange, then go back with your red and put it on there. What I will say is you're going to have to wash your brush again because if you don't, guess what color you get? You get a wonderful pink. Maybe you end up liking the pink. Probably not. So if you're going to go back in here and darken this up with any of this red, adding red streaks, either get a new brush or wash this out really good so you don't end up with a um, red, orange, yellow, and pink canvas. So I will take my medium brush because why not and then add in some of those dark red streaks just to give yourself a little bit more movement so i'll see all those dark reds just kind of come in and sit right over the top and the same thing with this medium brush this medium brush is flat or it's thinner if you can turn it so you remember you can keep turning that even a medium brush in your hand to give yourself more than one um, stroke size because if you're doing one size all over the place you're going to start you'll, you'll see like a pattern forming and it, you might not want that so just keep going back and forth with your brush using all the different sizes that brush can give you all right i'll throw it in the water really fast step back if you are getting angry with your painting or if you just can't see it go get a drink of water go get some more carbs to to finish out the rest of the painting whatever you need to do just walk away and then see it from about 10 feet away and then see it fresh so even if you come back two minutes later and you're like okay now i see that i want to do something else i want this blended a little more so you can see all of that when you come back and just take a fresh look at it even if you don't want to get up you're comfortable in your lazy chair shut your eyes for a couple of minutes and then open it back up and that will be fresh again for you that way you can see all of the little things that you either really like 
like maybe you didn't like something to begin with and then you look at it again you're like well that actually really works so don't allow yourself to get frustrated with it just let yourself see it fresh and see it all over again it just it looks new it's all new and it's all you know just that's mine i did that i i rocked that all right you lost this at white okay i did not change my brush when i went to the white what i did was i washed it out really good and then um, dried it so when you wash your brush remember to dry your brush always remember to dry your brush and then i picked up a good amount of that white and then went into a circular movement so circular using your whole shoulder to give yourself that circular movement and i blended it out into that yellow let's see nikki did that answer the question is there something more see and then if you're doing the white over here on the blue it's the same thing the same exact process you want all of that out of the brush all of your blue out of your brush or pick up a new brush and get the that bright white happening if you need to dry it go run and take it into the dryer really fast and dry it and then go back on top of it and do that same movement to get that really bright white. Um, let's see what else. I really hope that helped. Let's see. All right. So there in this one, like we talked about, is the purple. So that purple is that same movement over the top of your blue. So you still see blue all through this canvas. It is the same kind of movement when we added in all of the rest of these colors. So we didn't just like and fill it all in. So it's not a solid color. This is just brushed in on top of that blue in that same large circular movement so you can work on it like this and then work on it like this but you might do different angles if you're thinking about it as a whole painting and then just taking it and just completing your round so it stays with that same circular round in the center then you're going to keep that same circular motion so if i'm over here and i kind of like brush in some purple and i go over here and brush in some purple i might have different angles and so when you're looking at it further away You'll say it isn't it isn't completing that circle so just think of it as a whole painting even without the purple and just use your whole shoulder and bring that purple into those edges and then don't forget you're going to want to brush in a little purple on the sides because you don't want to look at it from the side and see all that blue sitting underneath it once you've got your purple on top i am going to wash my brush out because this top one, while the bottom one has the purple surrounding it, the top one has touches of black at the bottom. That black means that you're starting to hit the ground. There's going to be some sort of like movement. So if I just went from this point right here and just added these little black flowers, then you're going to have all these points of this strange red behind it. This kind of just gives you that flow that there is going to be ground so you're hitting some ground it, again you're still going to see through it so you can still all see all sorts of red through this black so i am you just take a little bit a little bit of your black on the tip of your brush and then if you feel more comfortable using a smaller brush go right ahead again i like it because you have all this different movement and it it covers really well really fast instead of seeing a bunch of little bitty brush strokes so I'll take my black and then just go in and it's messy it's messy there is nothing you know there's nothing linear about this painting it's all if you look at each little section of it it's messy I lifted my canvas on top so I can kind of hit the bottom and without hitting at my the bottom of part of my easel so i did put the canvas on top 
of my easel. And if you hit it hard, it'll knock it right back into the can to the easel. But if you're just lightly brushing on that black, it'll just sit right on top. And again, do remember your sides. And then you can add a little bit more black to your brush just to give yourself a more of a, of a solid color instead of um, that lightness. But again, I want to see, I want to see these little pieces of red through my black. I don't want a solid color here. I want to be able to see that this is just an addition, not something that is going to take over. So I'm going up just what, about four inches on the sides and giving it that good rounded feel on the bottom. So there's just a little bit of coverage on the bottom. I really appreciate you guys joining. This is so cool. I was so nervous and excited for the past several days. We talked about it a little bit and uh, I just, I watched a couple videos on how to even do Facebook live pages or, and, um, I just created it before I even know, knew fully what I was doing just to make sure I didn't back out. It's been driving me insane not seeing everybody and having two or three paints on the weekends and being able to see familiar faces or new faces. So this, this to me is pretty awesome. All right, so I've added that black to the, the background. So if you think I added too much back, if you added too much black to that background, I don't have very much in my brush, but I will just go ahead and use my rag and take a little more of that out, dip it right into, so no water, and dip it right into my red and then give myself another red streak. So I kind of went back over it. So if you did that, if you gave yourself too much black, because I know black takes over, it really does. It just eats everything in its wake. So you can just take a little bit of that red and then add in that black or add a little bit of red and add in over that black. So nothing's dry and just going straight over the top of it, adding just a little bit of red right back into the painting. Ah, oh, thanks, Marita. Thanks. Let's see. Oh, sorry, Jessica. I will save it as a video later so you can kind of play and stop however you need to so you can work on it if you weren't able to get supplies because i know that was a big issue for some people is being able to order supplies um michael is doing michael's store if you have in your area is doing wonderful they you go online you purchase whatever you want you find your closest store and then they have curbside pickup so when you get there you call them you tell them that you're there you show them your id and then they give you your stuff and it's completely easy. You didn't leave your car. They have lots of sales. I know one sale ends today and it's 30% off all regular priced items. They also have canvases, canvas packs for sale for $9.99. So that is really, really easy ways to get all of your um, supplies without even getting out of your car. We all know there's, there's Amazon. Amazon's taking a little longer to get things to you, but they're still pretty quick. So if you, you don't have time to even go to the store, you can always order everything off of Amazon. And it's just search acrylic paints, acrylic paint brush, and then canvas. There's so many types of canvas. They have canvas boards that are thin and they're not this um, stretch canvas. My favorite is the stretch canvas. One, because I like painting on it better. Just, I, I like it so much better. I like having the sides. Two, I like being able to take a stick pen, put it wherever I want in the wall, and hang it up without having to worry about how I'm going to hang it up. So stretch canvases are my favorite. There really isn't a difference once you're actually painting. They're all just so the same. They all have that same um, quality to them. It's just I like stretch canvas. Let's see. Oh, thanks, Crystal. And absolutely. And then, like I said, after I save it as a video, if you can, 
you know, post how you did it. Show me, show me your painting. Show me how you made it yours. Just send it, just upload your photo to the video and you can kind of show everybody the amazing job that you did. Let's see. Okay. So let's go over the black part again. So I took that white out of my brush. Didn't want that white anymore. Um, dried it really, really well. Took a little bit of black on the tip of my brush and then just um, went over it with the brush. So I use the very small part. If you don't want to use this big old brush, if it kind of intimidates you, go to that medium brush, go to a smaller brush. But if you're using this part of your brush, you can bring in all these different layers. If you bring in too much black, I went, I didn't wash it. I just took out most of the black off my paintbrush, went back for the red and kind of put red back over the top in that same same u-shape motion if you're doing purple you're going to do the kind of the same thing as the black you still want to see through it but you're doing a complete circular motion and if you're do, even if you're doing this these colors and that within the center you'll want to do that complete circular motion just to make sure you keep that eye going around you don't want somebody to look at your painting and kind of let their eye drift off you want their eye to keep looking and seeing different things as it's going around and around your painting. Let's see, any more questions? Oh, I see Rhea is going to do a red one. So you better post your red one on the video afterwards so we can see how that turned out. The Anybody doing any of the other different colors? Let's see how those things turned out. All right, so are we all pretty much at this point? I know that these whites are really showing up under the light a lot brighter than what it is over the painting over here, but it will dry a little bit. And of course I have a really bright light shining down and a really bright light shining at this. So it's really picking up those whites. Let's see. All righty, so I have my last little brush. And this one is the little pointy one. This one also you can get on Amazon for pretty cheap and they come in really big packs. Especially if you are using it on a wide area, they kind of get ruined pretty fast. And if you let your kids use them, they get ruined really fast. But they have packs, I think it was like 25 brushes for like $7.99. So really, really inexpensive. So see, this brush has even kind of been played with a lot, but when you put it in the water, you can kind of roll it and it gets you that point back again. And then when you're in your paint, when you're doing your paint, you're kind of in your paint and on the side of your palette or your plate or however you're doing it, you can roll it on the side when rolling that paint in. We're going to work on that background. So this one has a little more grass. This blue um, picture has a little more grass at the bottom because you, there's not this big, huge amount of black like we have on this one. You have that purple. So to, as to fill in and get it grounded, there's a little bit of grass at the bottom where the top one has more big pieces of grass, big pieces of, of whatever that is. Um, so we kind of plant them. I like to, if you're doing a tree, I like to plant the tree first and then figure out where all my trees will go. So I'll plant trees with this. I'm going to kind of plant. So I'm going to work over here. Don't be scared. Just put a large amount, touch it and bring it down to the end of the canvas. The same thing again, you touch it and bring it down to the end of the canvas. Yes. See right there. It didn't, um, continue touching that's okay then just bring it right back down let's see what else what else can i tell you so if you're doing the blue one with not this much black or, or just a different color when you're doing grass i don't technically have grass on that top one but if you want to do grass it's really fun. You just take your pointy brush and then just flick it down. Just flick 
all over your canvas. So this one will actually have a little bit of grass, but I wanted to show you. And don't mow your grass. That means don't have every piece of grass starting at the same place. You want one way down here. You want one maybe a little further up top. You want thick ones and thin ones. You, if you go and you're like, uh, 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 all you're gonna see is lines. You're gonna have a bunch of mowed grass. It's not gonna be natural. So if you just go in and kind of flick all the way to the bottom of your canvas, so a good amount of paint, touch and drop. And just very lightly. I know gravity works and I know what we have a hard time keeping ourselves and our brushes from falling into the canvas. So you'll learn just that I like pinky. I love, this is not dry, so I'm not gonna do it. Uh, but when it, if it's dry, I love putting my pinky on the canvas and then bringing my brush down because that gives me that natural ability to kind of stay off of the canvas. But since we don't have that, you just kind of take it, touch the canvas, and then bring it down. That way you get those very, very thin lines, not so heavy. This one has all sorts of kind of lines, so you can't even tell if you made a mistake. So let's see, let's just go ahead and put one right there. So I'm just gonna go around the painting, and don't work on one area at a time. Work on the painting as a whole. If you work, say I put a ton in here, and then a little bit here and a ton, and you'll see it's all kind of blocky. But if you look at the painting as a whole, just work on the whole thing at the same time. Make some grass blades go, you know, down from the left, make some go down from the right. Some may be a little bit straighter than others, but you know, the more un, um, oh my gosh, what is that word? I don't have my helpers here to give me words. Um, nothing in nature is symmetrical. Nothing in nature is completely linear. Everything has its own little movement and nothing is going to be the same. And you don't want that. You, you know, plus it's hard to recreate. So who cares, right? We want it to look natural. And if it's not all the same, you're like, see, that was a happy accident because it's supposed to be that way. And nobody else is going to see any thing that you think is a is something that you know maybe i didn't want that there but next time somebody else looks at it they're like that is so cool and they didn't see that you made a mistake they see this natural um progression this natural unevenness this just nature so i am just going in all over the canvas i want some up here even and let it run right off the canvas so up here kind of you have a squiggle one not a squiggle, more of a, a um, curve. And then I'm gonna let some fall right off this canvas. Again, whatever you're doing to the front, you continue off to the side. So I'm gonna let it run right off to the side. Um, so I'm working right on the side. I'll show you. So you'll see these little lines and they carry over right just like you're doing in the front. So whatever you're doing to that front, you're gonna to wanna to do to that side. Does somebody give me words? Oh, organic, yes. Uniform, planned, what? You guys are awesome, thank you. I need words. I have the worst problem with finding the correct word. And I usually have my friends here to make sure that I am saying one, the right word, and correct me when I say the wrong word, and two, just giving me more um, terms to use. I admit my faults freely. Don't tell my kids that, though. All right, so some of these I'm filling in because as you up top, thick, as you're hitting towards the ground, as you're heading towards that ground, they get a little bit thicker. So I'm just kind of taking the, the, a lot of paint on the end of that brush and filling in some of those, letting it go thicker as it heads towards the ground. All right, it's quiet, I can't stand it. It's so weird, usually I'm having to tell people to be quiet. 
Ah. All right, people, talk to me because I can't take it. I wish I could hear your voices. I know that some people have said about using Zoom, but I I had ran into some issues with it yesterday in a different meeting. And I think Zoom is, um, their servers are having issues keeping up with all of us that want to use it. I know the schools are starting to use it. Visit supervisors are using it. Um, a therapist we had a therapy visit via zoom which is awesome because they can see you you can see them you can interact and it's you can even add in way more than one person and you don't have to be in the same place um, but i think that it's starting to get a little overloaded on on that that website so i am gonna make a couple cross just one just goes all the way across all the rest of these other ones. Christina asked me a question. Will you fix this for me? When social distancing is over, I will fix it with you. That is all I can say. Spoiled. Spoiled you are. Yes, we were supposed to listen to the teacher, but um, I have several children and lots of friends and nobody listens to the teacher. <laughs> nobody listens to the mom. It is a constant like, what? And that is, I, I did the same thing. So, but yeah, yeah, okay. Let everybody listen to the teacher. I cannot wait to watch this thing all over again once I saved it as video, because I'm going to hate every second of having to listen to my mouth. Oh, I am not, I'm not looking forward to that part whatsoever. All right. Christina, listen. All right, I don't have time for you right now, Christina. So for those tops, all these little tops, so you can do really small petite tops like the ones on the bottom, or you can do a little bit thicker tops like the ones on the top. You can go flowy however you want, so but it's all the same kind of movement. So with this, I'm going to take it and I'm flicking it up. So I went to the end. I had a good amount of paint on my brush and I flicked up and then I flick up, up again. And I'm working myself kind of in a zigzag pattern down that stalk. And no, don't make it perfect. Again, we don't want anything to be linear. We want it to be different sizes, thicknesses, all of the above. Like some of them you're just going to smush and it's just going to be a huge amount of like, a, what is this called? I don't even know what type of grass this is called. Hay? Is it hay? I don't know. But seagrass. Seagrass, sure. I want to be at the sea right now, so we'll call it seagrass. Celeste called you out. Celeste, you called me out. You... Have so many kids here breaking. <laughs> I am. I am every day breaking the orders of social distancing just in my house by the kids that I have. And uh, if the governor wants to take a couple for a couple of days, I, I'll tell you where I live. Come on and get a couple. I swear that they're helpful and they're so excited to um, be at home every day without somewhere to go and do stuff. That is a lie. Just saying. They have skated. They have turned my downstairs into laser tag. They, we have so much going on in the house. It is a constant family sleepover. I don't even know what to call it. Um, I had to create a new schedule with the kids yesterday using their input. Um, for this newness that we have. So we have like a daily schedule. We have a daily chore chart mm -hmm. that they can pick from. Um, oh, you wanna know how many kids I have? <laughs> well, at home right now, how many kids do I have at home right now? <laughs> uh, eight? Four, five, Is there eight? I think six, there's seven. Yeah, no, seven? Seven. Okay, somewhere around there. And then I have three that don't live at home anymore. Um, some people like to collect figurines. I collect kids. 
<laughs> so. Crystal said somebody was busy. No, somebody was not busy. Well, I'm busy, but not in the fun way. Um, we find our children um, at different places. So. That is hilarious to know. My uterus was not that active. All right, so I'm just kind of going around giving different areas those little, um, I'm okay, we'll stick with seagrass, these little seagrass toppings. Let's do one up here. All right. So hopefully everybody's centers are drying while we're working on these other areas. So when we're ready to work on the dragonflies, we will have a pretty dry canvas. Again, if you've used more paint and have more layers, that blow dryer is your best friend. So if you don't have one, you can go pick one up. Goodwill, actually Goodwill's closed, huh? So not Goodwill. But you can just pick one up and it, it's just your best friend. Yeah, <laughs> put it in front of your heater, rock, run around with it in your arms and waving it around, however you need to get it dried off. Um, but that way, you're, when you're putting your layers on, it'll come out a lot better with it dry. So I am hoping that this is all getting dry up here while I'm working all this, all this wonderful stuff down here. All right, so I think that I've given myself enough. If I don't, then I can always come back in and fix it in different places. So if I decide that over here doesn't have enough, then I'll go back in later. It's not like I'm not messing with different colors. I can go in and add it even after adding the dragonflies. Ooh, there's a lot of comments. Oh, Jade, you called me out on lots of names. <laughs> Oh, it's okay to lose track at home. Yes, you're right, Heidi. It is, I don't know who they are half the time anyways. I just kind of like you, you, and you get in the car. If there's always another you, then whatever. I probably won't even notice that they're just, they're just more kids. I, I say kids drive me insane, but obvious I kind of like being insane because I just keep getting more. Luckily, I have a very, very sweet husband who is um, just deals with me and knows that if he comes home, there might just be a different kid or a new kid here. <laughs> and I know with a lot of us that do the foster care that our husbands feel the same way when they come home from work or maybe even other way around, they might come home to, hey, by the way, this child's name is, and then, you know, welcome to our family. Um, so that happens. No lie. My husband can attest to that. Sometimes my kids out me, especially the older ones are like, before you come home, just know you're coming home to a new such and such. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm really hoping that this is dry. So with these dragonflies, I'm not going to work on each individual dragonfly at and finish it all at a time. I want to do the same thing, the same thing like I said, the more you think of your painting as a whole, the more um, natural it's gonna look. So you can start by putting a dragonfly, I'm, I'll start by putting a dragonfly here. I'm really hoping this is dry, it doesn't look like it, but with a lot of paint on my brush, still using this little bitty brush, I am going to give myself a body. So that body is going to be an oval and again it doesn't have to be perfect if you look at my dragonflies or zoom in on those pictures over here that are on the um, facebook page you'll see that it's really there's really nothing about a dragonfly except for the whole idea of a dragonfly so i gave myself an oval body and then i'm going to come over here and give myself a little oval body here so if you're thinking about this as a as a whole I don't want every dragonfly heading the same direction. I don't want every dragonfly the same size. So thinking about that, I gave, so I've done two so far, and these are just the bodies. You can always go bigger. Going smaller, lots harder. 
So just know, okay, I am going to do this body and maybe I want it to be a little bit bigger. So then I add a little more to it. But if you're doing it a little at a time, there's because there's no erasing at this point, getting that black butt off, off the canvas is going to be very hard. So just think smaller. And then if you always, if you want to add a little bit to the size of the body, much easier to add than to erase. So I'm doing, I'm going to do one way up here, just a little one way up there. One thing we did find out making this painting that if you want your dragonfly to go a different way, turn your canvas. So but funny thing is that you have to remember that later. And so you have to turn your canvas back around again, or you have a strange looking dragonfly. Not going to say that we did that. I'm just going to say that I'm just doing that as an option. All right, so I'm going to do another dragonfly over here and I want him to go into this direction. So maybe he's flying down into the seagrass. I'll do another one over here. And so I have what, one, two, three, four, five, five bodies so far, or I can't count them at six. Let's see. I'm going to put one, a little bitty, bitty one over here. So this little bitty body will help give you a little bitty dragonfly. So the smaller they are, the more it looks like they're further away. The bigger they are, the, the bigger and the, the closer it's going to feel. If you're splattering stars on the blue, definitely do it before the dragonflies. I mean, if you didn't, that's fine. You can always go back over the black. So if you got a little star on your black, you can always touch it up by putting a little bit of black back on that spot. So if you're doing stars, definitely go ahead and take care of that um, before you start doing any of this black. So you would have yellow, or I'm sorry, if you're doing the stars, you have that white, the, the different colors, blue, the purple, and then you kind of splatter the stars. If you didn't, then it's fine. It's just black or purple or whatever for these little stalks you can go over so say i splattered a couple pieces up here so i'll just go in and touch it just to cover that up once that white is dry so you can always go back and kind of cover that up when you're playing with two colors like black and white it's really easy to correct and go back over um, and change that step Alrighty, I just started seeing that part of my canvas wasn't all the way done on all the sides, so I was playing with it for a second. Um, so for stars, I love white. So with so I have a ton of paint in here. Um, let's just do that. Let's do that really fast. I'm not gonna splatter this. Don't worry. Um, I like taking a little bit of water in a different cup scooping up all of this little white here into a cup and then adding a little bit of water. So you take your little brush. Oh, I have black on my brush. I'm just going to pretend so you can see this a little bit better. So I'm going to scoop up the black and you don't need much. So you have a, a I pretend this is white. Okay. Um, so I have all this black in here and then I'm going to take my water and add just a, a little bit of water. This is the nastiest looking water ever. Um, but so you would want clean water for whites, right? Um, and then you have this mess. See this mess there? It's really, really cool. So you have wet, watered down paint. Uh, make sure that there is some consistency to your um, paint because when you're splattering it, you want some of it to be thick, some of it to be thin. You want to see some stars better than others. I do, when I am splatter painting, I do flat. Whether you're doing it on the floor, whether you take it outside really fast and put it on the ground. And then, so you take it, you tap it off a little bit. So you see all those splatter paints? Lots of those you didn't want on your canvas. So you tap it off a little bit so where it's just in the brush right itself and it's bad i say bad finger so you take your brush and you hit it towards your finger and then it splatters on your canvas and then you can kind of walk around your canvas splattering at different places but that biggest important part is taking it once you bring it out here is tapping it on the side of your cup to get some of that out if you don't you'll end up with a, a huge splatter 
Sometimes that's fun though. We've done creative flowers where we put it on the floor and it's a huge amount of paint and we just kind of fling the paint right at it and it turns out really fun and really cool that with stars, you're gonna want those little. And the more you tap it onto the canvas, you'll start out with bigger stars. The more you tap it, we'll start giving you smaller stars. So just kind of walk around your canvas doing that bad finger and then um, it'll start giving you all of those stars. And it's so much fun. You should see my floor and one of my tables where we do all of our splatter painting. Um, people are scared to do it at first, but after they've done it the first time, they love it. They love adding stars or, or adding, we call it fling and paint, um, to their paintings. And it just adds that neat, organic look to it. And it just makes it even more yours. You have no idea how it's going to turn out, but it's pretty cool. All right. Let's see. Did I miss something? Um, that shape for the body of the dragonfly is going to be a, an oval. So it's just like an elongated oval and you can always add a little bit more to it and making it a little bigger, but it's just an oval added to it. Alrighty, so for the head, it is a rounded, I would say, is it a spade? Like, it's a rounded triangle for the head. <laughs> God, Christina. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and start with this one. And so it is going to be a triangle. So you just kind of smush the brush. You have the point, smush the brush one way, and then smush the brush the other way, and then kind of fill in. So seriously, that easy. There's nothing technical about it. You take it, let's do this one. So tip of the brush, touch the canvas and smush down to make that part of the triangle and then smush down this way to make that part of the triangle and then fill it in. You can also fill in more of the body if you feel that is necessary. For the tail, the tail is kind of like the grass. So how we do that little flicks of grass, the tail is kind of the same way. It is, I take it and I just flick it down. And the same thing here, take it, flick it down. And so it has a good amount of paint on it. It's not really any kind of like structured way or even appropriate way. So if you look at it, you're like, okay, I know that's a dra dragonfly, but that is so not what they look like. But getting those thin tails, you just take it, start with in, by the oval and then take it and flick it down. The same thing here. So I wanted this one to go the other direction. So I'm going to move my brush or the canvas, however you want to do it, and then point and then point off to the other side, giving yourself a rounded triangle for the head. And the same thing. I have a good amount of paint on my brush and I'm going to flick it backwards. Or you can turn your canvas around if that is easier for you. That way you're going the same direction with your movements, but your dragonfly has lots of different directions that he's flying. I'm filling it in just a little bit. And then we'll go over and here's the itty bitty one. So I'll just do an itty bitty head. And the same thing, a smaller tail. I'll just do another one up here. So we have a little bitty head. and then flick down the tail. So I just keep adding paint to my brush. So there is a good amount of paint on my brush. So this is just like a rounded triangle. So this one I had coming off the side like he's flying down. So I am gonna turn my canvas upside down and do the same thing. Oh, let's put it on the edge. That way I can get that flick of the tail and then that rounded triangle. So touch and kind of bring off to one side and then touch again and then bring off to the other side and then you can kind of connect them. How many more? Oh, there they are. So at this point, it looks like you have a bunch of tadpoles on your painting. So with no, le no leaves, oh my gosh, with no wings, they look like tadpoles. Please don't say anything else, Christina. 
I know what you're going to say. So I am just going to finish up this one right here. So I have a couple different sizes. They're going a couple different directions. And then I'll turn it back over. And then I will start working on the wings. For the wings, I would have two separate brushes. So you have your black brush for your shadow of your wings, and then you'll have a white brush for the white part of your wings. If you don't have two brushes, don't worry about it. You're just gonna have to wash it out. So if you don't have two brushes, just wash it out. Just get all of that black out of there because you want that bright white. But I am going to grab another brush. All right, so for the white part of the uh, dragonfly's wings, I'm gonna start again with this one. I don't know why he's my favorite, but I'm just gonna start with him. I'm going to do a big rounded part and then it's gonna come into a small area and then just kind of like a elongated teardrop. And again, you can always make it bigger. So say I made it small and I want it to be bigger, add it to the end. What is the point is that you're big as on the end and then as you're getting towards his body, you're getting thinner. Your shadowing, your um, black shadowing on the wings can help you, let's say if you mess up just a little bit, when you give that shadow to the wing, it will help de define your white so don't worry just try it big on the bottom and then coming in to thinner on the top as you're hitting towards the body so just an elongated teardrop and the other side same thing thicker at the end and as you're coming in towards the body You're going to get thinner. It is hard to talk, much less breathe. When you're trying to do detailed work, I find myself holding my breath a lot when I am doing more of the detailed work because your body moves. No matter how much you try, if you're talking, your body is moving, especially when you're trying to get all these little pieces down. All right, do I have anything I need to remember? You guys have any questions for me? So we're gonna complete that process all over our canvas. And remembering if it's a smaller uh, dragonfly, then it's going to be smaller wings. So for this dragonfly over here, I think that I want him to have like his wings all just on one side. So you can kind of take it, do the same thing. I smushed it down and then smushed it down and came to a lighter to an end. So I kind of want him to have his wings kind of up. So I'm just going to give him two. And then over here, I'll do the same thing. Big, 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 big teardrop all the way down into the body. So thick to the thinner part as you're hitting towards the body and then down below. Oh, firefly. We did finger paint fireflies once, but I don't think I've ever painted a firefly. So firefly has no long bottom. It has a very rounded end. So you would want that to kind of be the main part of that. So it would have probably about the same head, but more of a rounded bee's bottom maybe, instead of this long dragonfly oh that's gonna be so pretty if you do that and you do that in the night scene and having a, a, a firefly i haven't seen fireflies in years let's see that would be really cool though that i think that would be awesome i now you got me thinking about a firefly yes like a light bulb christina absolutely <laughs> please don't draw a light bulb um but like, so it would be the same kind of head, 
the same kind of body, but with more of a um, rounded bottom, not that elongated bottom to it. And then you could add maybe a touch of that yellow or maybe well, if you don't have any yellow in it, then maybe just a touch of that white or really light yellow and white. Because if you don't have yellow in a painting and you add just a little bit, you're going, that's like, it's going to, it's going to be huge and it could look really good. Um, but I would go slow, like adding in that yellow, even if you do more of a white yellow, then it'll match the wings a little bit more. And of course the wings on a, a firefly are going to be more bee-like as well. They're going to be not as long as our dragonflies. They're going to be more of a that rounded, cute little bee wings. That's really cute, guys. That, what a neat way to adapt a nighttime scene. Right. Where did I sell up here? All right, you guys must be really concentrating because I'm not seeing money questions. <laughs> and that happens here too. So you have a whole class of people that when we're doing background, it gets, you know, everybody's conversating and talking with each other and getting to see each other again. And then once we get to starting to do these detailed the endings and whatnot, the whole class, the whole room just kind of gets silent. And it's just, to me, silence is eerie. I'm just not gonna lie. I like silence sometimes, but it, I'm not used to it. So it is a little eerie. Christina, you're asking, asking an actual question. What do we, <laughs> every, do we every certificates for attending this training on self-care? <laughs> okay. Well, you can talk to your own licensor about that if you're wanting self-care hours. Um, it's just, to me, this is just absolute self-care. That or you're going to have to take the class of them or a great wolf if that ever gets to happen. My kids have been dying because their beach trip has been canceled for spring break. Their great wolf has been canceled because of everything. So they, they think life is over, which I guess to a kid, I think life is over too. So, oh, so let's all make certificates. You hear that? Everybody else is going to give you a certificate. That's so sweet. <laughs> Oh, I almost forgot the one on top. Don't forget you. Let's see. It, you, Deborah, could absolutely add color to the dragonfly wings. Their dragonflies have so many colorful wings that you could totally, even little spots of color like I would do maybe watered down color. So you're not taken away from everything else and kind of going against all the colors that you have here. But even if you did like little watered down colors to make it like a little bit of a, like an oily color or an opaque colors, just kind of water it down and add little spots of color to your wings. If you want more of that color in there, I think that'd be really pretty. See you guys, people have the best ideas. I love it. When we do a class and somebody goes completely off the rails and making this thing completely their own, normally everybody is just floored and absolutely loves it. And then it helps the class too because they start adding in their own little ideas. I don't want anybody to be afraid to make this theirs. This is your painting. You're going to look at it forever. So you can look at it and say, I did that. I did that color. That color is just mine. I love that when people do that because it, they don't, nobody wants a carbon copy. If you wanted a carbon copy, then you just go buy a picture off the shelf. This is yours. You spent your time doing this. Let's see. 
<laughs> oh, Tina, this happens more than you think. It normally is not a cup of milk. It usually is a cup of wine or a drink or whatever. And waste not, want not. They still drink it. I don't know if you'd want your daughter drinking that, but that is really cute. So tell her I'm so sorry, and I totally know what it's like. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, hi, Crystal. I'm so sorry. I really, I kept going over everything. So when I make it into a video, you should have no problem following it. That way you can kind of stop and start or restart different areas when it, this is all over. <laughs> Christina. Oh, anyways. All right. So I have them all having wings now. So I'm going to go back to my brush that has my black on it. Remember to take that water out of there. I don't want all the color out of it. I don't care about that. I just want, I don't want any water in my brush. So I'm back to that black brush, same kind of brush as the other one. If you didn't have another brush to replace it with, then it, you're just going to get all of that white out of there, get all of that water out of there. So you have your black brush with no water in it. Let's see. Okay, um, let's see. Any other like questions um, before I start looking at the, the canvas again? Um, I'm just going to add the black shadows. So the black shadows are going to be the underneath part of the wings. So when I'm doing it, I know that the sun is in one direction and that doesn't make any sense that I, you know, that it's all over the place, but see, keeping this part the same. So he's facing this way. I'm still going to do his shadow and it's the same thing. I'm barely touching the canvas. I have a lot of paint on my brush and I'm doing it thicker on the outside and then thicker as it's coming in. And the same thing, I'm going to try to use my pinky to give myself a little bit of hold so thicker on the outside and it's still I mean still thin but thicker on the outside and as you're coming in towards the body you're going thin you're just giving it that nice little point if you messed up say that black is too thick for you wait till it dries go over it with a little bit of white to thin that out and fix your wing once it's dry you can totally make a different layer off of that I will pick him. My canvas is still a little wet, so I didn't want to put too much pressure on my pinky there. And so I'm just kind of rounding the bottom and going really thin as I get to his body. It's the same thing. And so you can kind of see even now, see those differences and how that makes those wings kind of pop. So it doesn't take very much black at all. So you're just taking it, going around, and you're giving yourself just a little bit of an outline for the canvas in blue this is outlines with white so the wings are the mixture of those blues and um, outlined with white or blue depending on it so these are not on um, this painting is not outlined in black this is their they're more of a blue wing which, so, you know, that this, that moon is still going to be your bright spot, but it's kind of just taking an absorbing part of that blue that's behind it. And then the exact same thing that I'm doing with black, but with white on those tips. And one of them in where it's closer to the white outlined a little bit with that blue. So you're doing the same thing. If your canvas is the, is the um, blue one, you're just doing it with a little bit of a different color. Um, you can certainly still do it with the black. It just adds just a little bit of a difference because the darkness of the canvas. This is really cool, guys. And I absolutely miss you a ton. I cannot wait till we're all done because I am all done. I'm way all done. Oh, 
Oh my God, Christina. I can't even say that out loud. Ah, <sighs> okay. So maybe a little more pointed and a little less rounded. I don't know how to, I can't see it. So I have no idea. Ah, <sighs> okay. So this little itty bitty one's just going to have a little bit of the black outline to it. Again, at home, if you're wanting to take a blow dryer to it just to kind of speed up that process so they don't, the colors don't mix, you can certainly do that as well. I like sometimes when it mixes, like some of that is, has a little bit of gray, just because I like variances. I, when you have all of like one to another color, more cartoony, which is still cool, um, but I just like, I like the natural Kind of like other colors that come in when those colors start to mix so that gray color and part of that wing just makes a little bit of a difference and i'm still on the side of my canvas so i'm still going to do finish him up up there on the side of the canvas so whatever you're doing to that front don't forget about the sides let's see feel like I forgot something but I don't think so for the blue painting you have more of a blue wing with the white highlights and then we're doing more of the black with um, the white wings with the black highlights um, so again so if you're looking around and you see that I want this to be a little bit thicker you can always go over it so it's nice and dry now you can always go and play a little more to it. And don't forget to sign your painting. That is your painting. You own it. You sign it. So whatever color, I usually pick a color that I've worked with. Um, so in both of these, they're both done with white paint, but you could always do yellow. So if you don't want your signature to be as bright, you can do red whatever your signatures or however you're going to put it on there, don't forget to sign your painting because that is your painting. I don't want to know what that noise was. <laughs> They've been very, very quiet up until now. So the Indians are stirring. All right, so I'm just going to give my painting a little bit of a signature. I'm going to choose orange this time because why not? And some people use their initials. Some people will give themselves more of a um, symbol instead of their name or initials. So whatever you um, sign it with, just go ahead and give yourself a little bit of a signature. I like putting the 2020 and separate it on the one side. It was really hard to get used to because before now I would just put a 19 or an 18. However, but now we have this whole 2020 thing. I just like to divide it and put 20 on one side, 20 on the other. All right. Missed where the dragonflies were blue on blue. Mine white still looks cute. Awesome. I want to see a picture. Let's see. You'd rather have mine. <laughs> well, it's here. You want it? Come get it. Not after this whole thing's over, I guess. But um, again, if anybody needs supplies, I have tons of supplies. I have a ton of everything. So just, if you're close, just message me. I'll put you a baggie together and make sure you have what you need. Um, so I don't know what we're doing next. I kind of thought about doing the birds next. Um, I'm not quite sure. The birds was a fun one. It's um, a very abstract. It's it's just kind of birds on a wire, but there are lots of color. Um, hold on one second. I am going to get it and I'll show you. So this is the birds one. This is very abstract. Very, so these are like the same three colors that we just used. And so all of this is very, very abstract. Mm -hmm. And then your, um, let's see, a bit too close. 
So we started out with the blue and the white and a little bit of black in the background. And then we did all of the rest of it. So I thought this might be a fun, um, abstract-ish painting because nothing is perfect about any of these birds. But you know that they're birds and the whole idea of it. And then I ended the whole thing by flinging some paint at it, which makes it fun. Um, so I think that this will probably be the one that I do next as soon as I figure out how to save this one and make it all happen. If you guys have any questions, please, please, please let me know um, how I can help. Am I going too fast? And, you know, I know that it took a long time for some people to get on to here. And I'm hoping next time it's a little easier. Um, I'll look to see what I did wrong um, by not... Um, I don't, I don't even know. I don't know what I did wrong. So if you tell me what I did wrong, I will certainly try to help that in for the next one. Um, again, if you need any supplies, I have canvases, I have brushes, I have paints. Um, I did find out that I need to get those little cuppies so I can give paints out in little cups with lids and whatever. So I will have that ASAP. Um, but, and then if you see anything on my on my site that is a class that's happened, I will certainly do that again. And we can work just like this. Um, this was fun. This was awesome for me. So I really, really appreciate you guys taking out your time and spending it with me. Um, if you have any questions, always message me, um, drop it on here. If you have the question, then somebody else might have the question. So I do appreciate you guys. You guys have a wonderful time. Please, please, please stay healthy and let's be done with this whole thing so I can see you guys in person again too. All right, it's my only... Oh, you're right. Okay, you're awesome. Thank you, Amy. I will definitely do that. I will make sure for those two. Oh, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, I just have to tell people on the regular. So is this video coming up on my personal page? Or on the face, my, and not on the, and not on the, wait, how is it showing up? Oh, it's not on the event. It's on my personal, like not personal, my business page, but it's not on the event page. Ah! Okay, you guys are awesome. Thank you for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna save it ASAP so you guys can kind of go back in and play with it. If you didn't cut and you didn't join us right off the bat, if you have any suggestions, please, 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 please let me know. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Be safe.